Hey guys, I'm back with another tutorial on how to record your DM307 grid into your host. There are a couple of ways to do this, and one is through audio by bussing your DM307 into an audio track and recording that way. Or the other option is with MIDI. There isn't currently a MIDI to host function in this particular virtual instrument, but there is a way to turn it on in contact. So to do that, let's go ahead and fire up a contact standalone version. Because in the options here, you'll notice there's a missing tab here. So we need to turn on the standalone version. Contact standalone. Fire that up. And you'll notice it recognizes the inputs that are coming out of contact. That's actually what's supposed to happen. But in your case, it's not set up yet. So let's go ahead and set you up. Click options. Turn on the engine tab and scroll down to where it says send MIDI to outside world. Go ahead and click here. The diamonds means it's active. So go ahead and click it and turn them on if they aren't already. I'm going to go ahead and click and turn all of these on because I like complete control over this whole scenario. So turn those all on and we'll go to the next tab. So in the MIDI tab, we're going to click outputs. Scroll down to where it says contact virtual output. We want to turn that on. So if it's not on, just go, just go ahead and turn that on and close. That's it. That's what you got to do to make sure that contact is sending the MIDI so that you can actually record the grid in your project. So let's go ahead and set this up and pick a drum kit. And you won't hear it in my video, but it's actually playing over my speakers, so yours should be as well. So if the sound is working, that's that's perfectly normal. All right, so that's pretty good. One thing to note is under your master tab, you have an external BPM counter. If you click and turn that on, that means it's being controlled by your host. If you uncheck it, that means you can manually change this to whatever you want. So to match and record perfectly, you're going to want to match the same tempo that's going on in your project. You're going to want to be able to do that for both of these, the plugin version and your standalone version. Because we're going to record out of the standalone version straight into Logic so that you can play around and edit the MIDI to play with your plugin version. Sounds really complicated at first, but I'm going to show you how to do it and you're going to be up and running and having fun. All right, so let's pick the one we want. Awesome, so that's pretty good. I got a nice beat groove going in the grid here. So I'm gonna record that. I'm gonna click external. If I click external, it's gonna to be too fast because currently I have 162 and that's what I was originally recording in. So I halved that by dividing by two, but you don't necessarily have to do that much math. Just click external, turn this down to a, just a slow tempo if you want, fix it whatever you wanna work at and just call it good. Awesome, so external's there, that's awesome. And I'm gonna do the same here, external, everything's synced and ready to go. Now when you press a button in the standalone version, you'll notice it's actually triggering these over here now, which is exactly what we want. So when we press this, you'll notice the MIDI coming in, F2, C1. Now Logic is hearing our standalone version. So let's get recording and then play the grid from the standalone version. And then stop it when you're done. All right, so now you'll notice all of the MIDI that was playing out of that is now recorded. And we can double click here and edit any of these. So if we wanted to change this entire section, we could do it that way. So it is possible to record, it just takes a little bit of setup. Now the, that's the MIDI way. Now if you want to record straight into a bus track, let's say we've recorded something here with the grid, you don't necessarily need the standalone version to record with audio. So I'm going to quit, Command Q, and it'll say, hey, those ports are gone now, which is fine, it's what we want, and then I'm going to record in with this grid. 
All right, so that's pretty cool. We need, we need an audio track, so click plus, open an audio track. And from your audio track, what you're gonna to wanna to do is set up the input to receive from a bus. So for this particular tutorial, I'm just gonna use bus 64, because that's not currently applied to anything. So it's gonna receive from bus 64. Then with your DM307, you're gonna send the out to the same bus, bus 64. It doesn't necessarily have to be 64. You can use bus one, two, or three, whatever you choose. I'm just choosing this because by default, some of these buses are already set up with reverb. All right, so we set this up. We armed a track to record. And I'm gonna open up TM307 here in my plugin. And I'm gonna hit record. I'm gonna hit play. And then you just stop it when you're done. And then now that audio is there. And it's ready for you to set up and just go crazy, record. Currently mine is in mono. That's not a big deal. You just click that little circle there and turn it into stereo. That's just a logic thing that had nothing to do with our recording process. And there you can hear it's still playing in mono. We'll need to record again in stereo to make sure that we get that. So it's something to be aware of when you're working in Logic to make sure the playback is also set to stereo. All right, so you can see how it's a little off there and pressing the play button to record, but that's not a big deal. You can always just drag that into the place that you need it to start at. All right, and that's it with recording with your grid. Hopefully that will help you guys out. And as always, have a nice day, and I'll see you later.